You're listening to Love and Light with Dr. Lisa, Everyday Living in Peace. Day-to-day living can be difficult in our world today, and most people don't know how to live a peaceful, joy-filled existence. The key to this is simple, love. Join me, Dr. Lisa Collins, for the next hour as I unpack and identify the need for a peaceful, love-filled existence by engaging the challenging and hard topics of life. On this show, you will lean into the healing practices that enlarge your spiritual reality through the act of love. This kind of love begins with yourself and your neighbor and transcends age, race, sex, generation, class, and sexual identity. The world changes when we root ourselves in love. Love and Light with Dr. Lisa starts now. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Lisa, and you're listening to Love and Light, Living Every Day in Peace on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour. You will not want to miss this. And let us help you experience how to bring more love into your everyday life. Each second and fourth Wednesday at 1 Pacific, 12 Mountain, and 4 Eastern Time, we have tools for living every day in peace. Do you have a community that you feel loved and cared for by others? Do you, um, everyone deserves love. Everyone deserves to be loved and have a place where they can receive healing, experience a loving community. I'm wondering if you have one. And does this kind of community happen? And where does it happen? Welcome our guest today. We have Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, education consultant and spiritual life coach wow here to help us discuss building healing and love in a community kathy brings a wealth of lived experience and love to the world and creating community to help anyone connect to living every day in peace let's welcome kathy to love and light living every day in peace hello kathy hello lisa <laughs> I am well, so wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. You have so much to offer. Um, I just, if you could just tell us, uh, you have such a depth of experience so that the listeners can know um, a little bit about where you're coming from. Can you give us just a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, um, thank you for looking at my work and even considering uh, what we, what I share with everyone. I, I live my life as a, um, I'm just a result of my community. You know, I was raised and people may say, what? Because my community is now one of the most dangerous places to live in this country, Brownsville, Brooklyn. But when I was growing up in Brownsville, it was very much, you know, a, a very loving place, a cultural um, Mecca for African-Americans and um, talk about healing and loving. I mean, it was it was in the air. You know, when I walked down the street, everybody knew everybody, everybody looked out for everybody. And I carried that into my, in every, every career I've had. And just in my life, I don't know how else to be because that was, that was my peace. My community was my peace. Wow, wow, that sounds wonderful. And also it sounds painful around the changes that have occurred. And so you're from New York City. You've been in New York City. I mean, I, I know you as a healer. So you were there before the pandemic. So what, what has it been like during the pandemic in New York City? We see the news, but what, what was it like for you? It was devastating because um, I, you've never seen, you know, everybody knows New York is live 24 hours a day. You know, the city that never sleeps actually stopped moving. That was unbelievable. Okay, I mean, one day we just rode to the city just to see the, the empty streets if they were really empty because it was mm-hmm. something I'd never ever experienced before. So just seeing your city emptied out, you know, the lights weren't on, you know, Broadway was sleeping. I mean, it's, it was unbelievable. And um, it was fearful because you couldn't, you didn't know, I didn't know if my neighbors were okay. You know, I didn't know, and I, and a few neighbors died, and I didn't know until 
you know, when we post, people started coming out and we found out, you know, if ambulance, all you hear here are ambulances all day long. That's all the first thing in the morning, still first thing in the morning, last thing at night, I hear sirens, you know, going off. So somebody's always going to the hospital and um, all day long, all day long. So it's hard to, to move around. It was hard. I, um, I made my peace in, within my home. And uh, and thank God for Zoom, <laughs> and <laughs> for Zoom and Facebook and all those other things. We really just try to um, create joyful spaces on Zoom. And, okay, uh, and, so yeah. you are already moving into because I was going to say, how did you find community during the isolation? Like, how did how did that happen? So um, so what did you do first? Well, the one of the first things I did. Was I have a I already had my writing workshop, Power in the Pen, what you see behind me. And um fantastic workshop. We usually would meet at the Brownsville Heritage House. So I, I got they I already had a Zoom account. So I said, okay, we're gonna meet on Zoom. We're not gonna miss a beat. We'll just keep going. And we we meet every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that continued. As a matter of fact, we started getting more people who could only reach us by Zoom who don't live here, you know, because now we had access to more folks. So we ended up getting more people joining us and we started having different uh like um, open mics and different events on Zoom that I thought would be helpful and make people feel good. And they loved it. They loved the poetry. Uh, we usually do a showcase every year and we continue to do that, but we just added more shows, you know, every uh, season, every other uh, Saturday or whatever, we'd come up with something to do to share. So, and people would tune in. We ended up getting a little fan base because people would come on to hear the poetry and have an opportunity to respond to and get things off their back and feel like they weren't alone for a while. Wow, that is amazing. So Power in the Pen was already, um, it was already in operation, but during the pandemic, it got a boost. Yeah. It got like, a, it got a shot in the arm, be, not not to be <laughs> figuratively, but it got a boost because people from all over could zoom in. Is that still true for Power in the Pen? Absolutely. Every Saturday, 11 to 2, we're on and um, and we're still zooming. We can't even really go back into the library yet. At where the heritage house is so we, we're still zooming and we also started doing uh i think that's when we started doing the prayer call because we we lost a member uh to covid and uh we started praying every morning so and not everybody could get on but whoever could come on that we we pray every morning at eight o'clock and then um i mean we just started doing a lot of other things i don't want to brush ahead <laughs> but but yeah we started praying together on zoom every morning too so that's a, all right. So power in the pins already going on. There's a community. How did you start that community? I mean, we're going to talk at the end about how to start your own community, but how did power in the pin get started? I had visited. Well, my thing was always giving back. I, like I said, Brownsville was such a culturally rich uh, environment. And there were so many people who I just, I, I wanted to honor because they, they saved my life. They taught me how to be, I was a, a black nationalists at the age of 10 marching, uh, you know, for uh, equality. And uh, we had the first uh, black superintendent. We had one of the first black uh, community run schools. It was quickly overturned because there was a big old uh, teacher strike as you know, they fought against it in 1968. But those people who I was with, who marched with us, who taught me everything I know about my history. They, they were wonderful people. People came from all over to come to Brownsville to stand up and fight together. So I, I, I took that everywhere I went and I taught it to all of my students. But then I said, when I retired, I want to come back and do something else in the community. So, and I retired in 2013. I went over to the Heritage House as I said, I need a space, you know, I, and I spoke with the director, Miriam, uh, Robertson, uh, the wonderful, amazing Miriam Robertson, and she says, "Come on, yeah, sure, come. On. You know, if you want to do that, I'll, you know, I'll give you space." So we started right then and there, and people started. It took a while, but the people started coming slowly but surely. And now, I mean, there have been. Uh, I'm sure at least 100 people who have come through. Some people just come and they write a little bit. They, you know, they come and I've, I started a book years ago. Now I want to finish it. Or they'll say, I, I don't know where to start, but I have something I want to tell. 
Uh, one lady came from the Bronx one day and she said, I just needed to come and tell somebody who I knew would be interested in my story. And they're all stories of survival. Um, they're all amazing, miraculous stories and they're heart wrenching, um, you know, crazy. So she had lost her sight and then she got regained her sight. And she said, hey, I want to write the book about it, but I just needed somebody to hear me. So that's what we want to be, you know, where people could come and be heard. That's the main thing. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, that's fantastic. And when we think about why we even need communities for love and healing is because there is a lot of hurt in our world. Um, there's one of your poems, um, one of your readings. Um, see if I can grab it out here. I have Kathy's books here. Um, I have Mariah Seeds. I have uh, Passion's Pride sitting right here. And I have Power in the Pen. And I was looking through these um, and there was a um, on page um, Mariah Seed on page 129 is um, something called rage. Mm. OK. <laughs> and, and I, you know, we have um, we have a reason why we need these healing communities of support in these places where we can be loved and be heard and be seen and oh it looks like we're getting ready for a break when we come back we're going to dive into this some more but I, when we come back i would like to um one of us to read this piece um there's a reason why if you're listening in today and you're wondering about healing communities of support we're going to go to our first break and um if you're listening to Love and Light with me, with Dr. Lisa, with our guest, Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, educational consultant, and spiritual life coach. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will explore more about this, this very needed topic of building community spaces of love and healing in your life. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back on Love and Light, Living Every Day in Peace. My guest today is Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, educational consultant, and a spiritual life coach who is talking with us about building community with love and healing and how she has fostered communities of healing and love. But before we continue, I wanna make sure that everyone knows how to contact Kathy. Kathy, could you give your contact information to our listeners? Sure, I can be reached. Um, I'm on Facebook. It's Kathy Wright Lewis. My uh, website is kathywrightlewis.com. No, no hyphen. Um, Crighteous at gmail and uh, powerindependent.org. Power All right. W.org. Can, can you repeat one more time? Powerindependent.org. Okay, awesome. Wonderful. So we have been talking about healing and loving communities. And now we're going to talk a little bit more specifically, there's a reason why we need to heal. Um, our world is often spinning, things are often happening. Uh, we don't really lean in and talk about these things unless we're, in my opinion, judging or saying someone is right or someone is wrong. So I want to ground this next segment in Dr. King. Dr. Martin Luther King, Six Principles of Nonviolence. And instead of saying, um, reading it as nonviolence, I'm going to read it as love and healing. Love and healing is a way for courageous people. It's an active, um, love is an active nonviolent resistance to evil. Love and healing seeks to win friendship and understanding. The end result of love is redemption and reconciliation. Love and healing seeks to defeat injustice, not people. Love and healing recognizes that evildoers are also victims. Love and healing holds that suffering can educate and transform. Nonviolence, uh, love and healing rather, uh, willingly accepts the consequences of its acts. Love and healing chooses love instead of hate. Love and healing resists violence to the spirit as well as the body. Loving healing is active, not passive. Love and healing does not sink to the level of the hater. Love restores community and resists injustice. Love and healing recognizes the fact that all life is interrelated. 
Love and healing believes that the universe is on the side of justice and love and healing resistors have deep um, love and healing people have deep faith that justice will eventually win. And so um, I just want to ground us in Dr. King's words. And there's reasons why we we have the need to heal in love. And Kathy, would you please read us a piece from your from your book, the 20th anniversary of Mariah Seed? Mariah Seed. OK, um, every chapter um, has a poem that proceeds. And this particular one is rage. Bloodless hearts filled with fire. Destruction is their one desire. One blind cop kills one black boy. Now the entire village we will destroy. Hate in their eyes, heat in their hearts. They'll find the culprit severed in parts, but will his life truly compensate? We've lost our future, induces fatal fate. Paralyzing pain from wasted pregnancy erupts in emotional despondency, then evolves to evoke an awakening. From death comes life, comes death, you see. Bloodless hearts filled with rage angrily turn the history page and close their eyes to committed sin. The village now buried, devastation welcomed in. Thank you. Thank you. And we have many reasons in our whole world and here in the United States to need to heal, to need to heal and to need love. Can you tell us, tell us Kathy, a little bit about the kind of depth of healing that's needed and how you've been able to uh, lead people in that direction? Okay. Well, the, um, there is a lot of rage and a lot of anger because people don't understand. Um, and it took me years to find out on this spiritual path of mine, just um, you know why we uh, have the lives we have when things seem so unfair, when you watch your community burn, when, you, uh, when you're in the midst of uh, racism and people uh, mistreating you all of the time. And, um, and it, you, I see it well up in my students. I taught for 35 years and I, I would see them and, and I have to teach them how to let go of the rage so that they could, because they didn't even understand why they needed to be in school. Why do, I'm, I'm dealing with rage, I'm mad at the world. You know, my parents are dead or my parents do, uh, are on drugs or we, we live in a dangerous neighborhood, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, are going on in their lives and they have to choose to, to want to be here so that the rage has to be healed. And uh, I had I had rage of my own. I had to be healed before I could go on and do um, anything else with my life and be a help to others. So telling people about uh, my rage and getting rid of my rage by understanding what my life was really for, what my true purpose really is, that that makes everything better. It's tolerable when you could say, you know, otherwise you want to, you, you do, you want to go out and kill somebody, you self-destruct if you don't know what to do with the rage. And then when you don't understand it, you think God hates me. I'm being, you know, I'm suffering all those things. I'm, um, I'm being mistreated. I, I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Uh, you know, I'm not lovable. I, I don't deserve love. You know, that becomes your internal um, mm -hmm. conversation, you know, I hate myself, you know, I, you mm -hmm. know, I hate my people, you know, mm -hmm. people, you know, they say these things, you know, to themselves after a while, you know, I'm just, I, and so you have to find a way of getting past that rage and, and learning once and for all to just quiet the brain. You know, mm -hmm. quiet that mind, get rid of that mindset, because when you're hearing that, you that's not of God. You know, that is not of God and we are of God. So when you can get rid of that and you start to hear some purpose, what happens in Mariah's seed and what I needed to share with everybody was the answer to the question, what do you do when it seems like all hope is gone and that life seems like you don't need to live it anymore and you're at your wit's end, what, what, what do you need to do? Turn to your ancestors, okay? Uh, seek God and, and find out uh, what your life is really about because at the end of the day, we chose to be here. We came here. There's a bigger reason. There's a larger picture. There's a purpose for everything, you know? So 
you can find that in the, every book of mine has a message, a different message, because it was something I was looking for myself, you know? So, so how do you calm the rage? You shut it off. You replace all those negative thoughts with positive thoughts. Uh, Ian LeVanzant has a book, um, um, what is it? Let it go. Uh, she she, she uh, ex teaches you how to do exactly that, to release all of the negative thoughts, those negative conversations you have in your head and uh, replace it with your positivity. And, and what if things are a little different from what you think they are? What if you came here to overcome all of that? What is it teaching you? You know, mm -hmm. you know what has it taught you to do? And um, so, so when you learn, when you start looking at life that way, why am I learning this lesson right now? You know, not why is this happening to me, <laughs> but why am I learning this right now? Right. And once I learn it, what, what the reason is, oh, I can overcome this. And, and, and then it opens up the doors and the windows and the, and the sky, and you could become everything that you want to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I, I'm stuck with this stuff, you know? it's, it's, a, it's about releasing. So, yeah, absolutely. And so Kathy, you, you're such an amazing example because not only are you leading this work, you are saying, I have done this work. Yeah. I have done this work to get to the place that I am now. So if there's listeners right now who are listening to, that are identifying with, yeah, I, I have those thoughts in my head all the time. They just cycle on and off that you said something valuable important and emancive it's like it's not you it's not you it's, it's not you. you that is not your voice that's telling you you're not worthy so this show is about love and light and living every day in peace that's why we have kathy wright lewis here today because she lives and works and walks in this way where she is leading people so first you did your own work there you go. Mm -hmm. And how did you start? What was the oak leaf that that you reached out to to do your own work? Oh my goodness! So many things were happening for me <laughs> <laughs> that it became unreal. You know, over mm. the years, I, I've always been a spiritual person, and I always reached out to spiritual communities, and that's a long, long story. But um, what I ended up doing. After three car accidents and a fire, um, I, I, um, I was in the hospital and I, I heard forgive, you know, I'm like, how did I get here? <laughs> What's going on? Why, mm. do I, why is this happening to me? And he said, you need to forgive, oh, and you, you know, and I need to forget, I needed to forgive everybody, including myself and myself mostly. Before Amen. All of those things that I was thinking about myself. I mm -hmm. was on the outside, but on, in, on the inside, you know, I failed marriages. Uh, my father abandoned me. My mother abused me. All this stuff that we were holding on to. Like, um, I, there must be something wrong with me. No, I had to let go. Forgive them. Forgive me. That was the beginning. Amen. Amen, Kathy. I, I totally identify. Forgive them. And forgive me. We need each other in this world and we need to um, lean in to the love and the light. Wow, it is time for a break again. I'm Dr. Lisa and you're listening to Love and Light at Living Every Day in Peace. And when we come back, we will continue to talk and make, make building communities of love and healing. We need it. We need it in our world and we need it within ourselves. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm back. Here we are, Dr. Lisa, and you're listening to Love and Light, Living Every Day in Peace. And we want to welcome back, welcome back and continue talking about building community with love and healing. So, here we are with Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, education consultant, and spiritual life coach. And can I just say just amazing <laughs> and amazing. We're sharing an experience about building community of love and healing. And so Kathy, um, I mean, I have several of your books here. I have three. I know there's a, a lot more than three books, but you talked about in the last segment how you, um, how you went through your own healing process and how you realized that, you know, you talked about forgiveness 
And then you also talked about um, going ahead and writing yourself to answers that you needed to know or you needed to hear. So can you, um, well, first of all, before you do anything else, please tell us about your books, about uh, your social media, how people can find your amazing work. <laughs> well, I'm on all the usuals, Facebook and um, in Instagram and, and Twitter and everything. But, um, and I, I told you my uh, website is my name, kathywrightlewis.com. I am, um, and the books can all be purchased on the website. Um, I'll just go to the um, store on the website. Mariah Seed was my first book. I, well, I, I, well, real quick, I used to write short stories all the time. And um, I, well, first I used to write songs as I was a musician. And then I used to write, I wrote uh, poetry. And, and from my short stories to the poetry, well, the short stories were for my students because they were tired of reading about um, old uh, white dead people, okay? And, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we read about something else, please. So I said, let me write. And I said, okay, you have to read what's on the curriculum, but then I'd sneak in a story and I put them in the stories and, uh, oh. and teaching vocabulary and stuff. So I so the students loved it. So I, I, I started writing stories about my community which they were familiar with because so I thought that that would get their attention. Well, little by little, I started realizing that the poetry and some of the short stories I was writing were really a book. And, uh, and I just started compiling them and I came up with Mariah Seed, Why Hope Lives Behind Project Walls, um, because I hope does live behind project walls. We have to be the answer to our own problems. The answer is within us. I truly mm. believe that. And I, even though I lived in, in the projects, we, we, like I said, the community was beautiful at that time and people were doing uh, wonderful things for one another. And the backdrop was of course the rights that were busing, bus, so I was able to tell, talk about busing. And I, I, and I know that we would never have survived if it wasn't for the spirituality in our community, if it wasn't, if we weren't godly people. Um, so I, I talk about how we went, we marched. And when, when we marched, it looked like Easter Sunday because people wore their best clothes. They were, you know, they came out and represented themselves well, but the, at the same time they were fighting. And who was in the front of the fights? Just like Dr. King, most of them were ministers. I was Catholic. My priest, Father Powers, uh, God rest his soul, he just passed. He was in the for forefront. He had marched with King. He came to Brownsville to help people to fight for their rights. So he was in, in the front of the line when it came to helping the schools to, you know, of getting our schools, getting black teachers in the schools and changing up the uh, way schools were run, a, a whole lot of stuff. So a whole lot needed to happen and people were willing to walk and fight for, for their rights. So I, I grew up in a very powerful uh, time in a very powerful community, but then it was attacked because we dared to stand up and, and it's still being attacked to today. I watched my community uh, literally burn. Uh, we all did. And drugs were, you know, brought into the community and it did, it, it burnt the people out, you know, so mm -hmm. it came one of the uh, highest criminal, criminally active, active uh, communities where, I mean, more people are in Rikers Island from Brownsville probably from, than from every, any other community, you know, so, but, um, but like I said, that my, my heart is still there. So I, I, mm -hmm. I still give back, I have to, you know. And I but, see you but, shining, a, shining a light on the work. I mean, I, I picked out this one piece from your other book, um, Passion's Pride, um, at the very beginning in the prologue, um, there is this paragraph, it says, um, if I may read it, it says, in my journey, I learned that blood connects the spirit to the body, but this connection is served when the body is riddled with bullets or savagely pierced with impalements when tender skin and muscle are lashed with brutal whippings such brutality allows negative forces to take possession of innocent lives the evil ones who bring this violence and suffering have abandoned their true nature begetting more and more hatred and cruelty down through the ages yeah yeah i wrote that and it's so funny because i'm i'm presently currently uh student of the um, meta, um, met, metaphysical university, university of metaphysics 
And um, the things that I wrote in this book that came to me um, spiritually and, and compelled me to put on paper are the things that I'm learning, you know, in, in the classes I take there now. And, I, and, and it's just blowing me away because I'm like, I'm getting confirmation for everything that I was being told. Most of the, when I was right, when I write, it's a, it's a spiritual uh, experience. I hear, I see, and I write it. Uh, uh, so a, a lot of what you just read, it's not like I knew that before, but as I was writing, it was coming through me. You know, and 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 then I, and then I got the confirmation when you know, like as I said, I started studying spirituality, and I'm like, whoa, that really is what happens. So so we can be disconnected, you know, and that's what the negativity does. So that's why we live in such a world that's so filled with, they don't want us to know our divinity. They don't know, want us to know that we're godly, that we're divine, okay? Because then you can't control me, okay? And then you can't make me live, you know, a certain way. And you can't make me your slave. And you can't make me a slave to your society. So I, then I'm truly free. So truth. Right. From, mm -hmm. Oh, they don't want that, right? So, so. Well, if, so, if someone is listening right now, if they're saying like, yeah, I, Kathy, I understand everything you're saying. Where, how did you, how did you start with your writing and what are ways that you utilize writing, performance, community? What, what can they do? What can they do to get started? I, I say start, well, if you want to do something, first I say pray on it, <laughs> start writing it all down. But you have to speak it. You speak things into power. You speak things into existence. Before Mariah C., I, I wasn't even halfway done. And I started telling people I'm writing a book. I know I'm writing a book. I have to finish this book. I, I said, if I say it, it's going to have to happen. So I started talking about it. So I spoke it into existence. And, I, and, I, and then I asked, how am I going to complete this when I have two kids and three jobs? And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow. crazy. but I was able to do it. And I just heard just write, just write, I write all the time. Think about writing when you're not writing and you're doing whatever else you're doing, always think about it. So you're thinking about what it is and you, you speak it, you write it down and then you start moving on it, ask for direction. I always, you know, ask whatever your belief system is, ask Holy Spirit, ask your higher self, whatever you call it, you know, where should I start and listen, stop and, and listen. listen and listen and listen, ask, and listen. stop. Yeah, and listen, ask, and, stop, and listen. Yeah, you so, so you have to be quiet to do that. Find a space to sit down and breathe and be quiet and hear. And, mm. and, and, I would, and, and let me tell you, the doors start opening up. They just start opening up and the things that this is your life to live. So take control of it. We create our lives. We create our worlds. So why bring negativity into it? If you, if you want to create a beautiful life for yourself, you make it beautiful. So we you make, make it beautiful. Make, you make it beautiful and listen, you know, that's what we're absolutely. Doing. Kathy, so, so much information. I know the listeners are going to go back and listen again to your words. And so you are a spiritual coach as well, because you said you were writing and then later you studied spirituality um, or the university that you're attending right now. So it looks, it sounds like your writing led you. Oh, right, 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 right. But so truly spirit was always leading me and I could always hear, but I would deny it. And that's what we all do. We all have spiritual gifts and we just say, you know, I'm not listening to that. Oh, that must, that's just crazy. You know, and um, I'm hearing, you know, don't take a left today, take a right, you know, and then I'm, <laughs> I'm not listening and I go ahead and take a left and I end up <laughs> in the whole traffic jam. And I'll say, yeah, why did you not listen? Who am I arguing with? You know, right. have a sixth sense we have. So, so once I started really listening and obeying, um, mm. you know, and calling on it and after, and every time I had an accident, uh, you know, and uh, 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 in a different injury, I was I realized, okay, I'm being shut down to sit to sit still and be quiet in here. And, mm. and, and I started listening in every situation I wrote. So I started listening, I started hearing, I started writing. So, so um, I forgot your question. So <laughs> what no, no, I mean, you answered. I mean, okay. so ways to utilize writing, performance, create community and love. What you said, like spirit yeah. led you yeah. to you. You sat down and you start writing. Mm -hmm. You start claiming with your words. And so if there's someone out there listening and you're saying, like, 
man, I, I wish I could be like Kathy. I wish I could find the love and light she has in the community she's built. Kathy, I know you have built many communities in your life and you talked about your, uh, about Brownsville and about the love there and about the pain of watching that change. I know I, as a um, educator, you built community. Um, I, know, I know that you, you are a person that if people are coming, you are, your hands are open to help them heal and to show love to them. So you've built community in so many ways. Power in the pen is one. I know that you've built communities around education. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you built communities around spiritual coaching. So if you could just like, um, oh boy, we're about to go to break again. We may have to hold that. But if you could just tell us a little bit more when we come back, when we come back, I want to hear a little bit more of your spiritual coaching and maybe um, we're going to listen to some more of Kathy's most beautiful words when we come back. But um, before we take a break, I just want our listeners to know we're listening. You're listening to Love and Light with Dr. Lisa and my special guest, special, special guest, Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, education consultant and life coach. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with Kathy. Stay tuned. We're back on Love and Light with me, Dr. Lisa. I have Kathy Wright Lewis, CEO, author, educational consultant, and spiritual life coach. We have been so blessed by her being on the podcast today, sharing her love and light with us. Kathy, one more time, can you please give your information before we start this next next little bit? KathyWrightLewis.com, no hyphen, uh, C Righteous at Gmail. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, and Twitter, of course, Cat Rageser one, I believe, is on the Twitter. The others are my name. And uh, Power in the Pen, www.org. Yes, thank you so much. And so we have been talking about building healing communities of support and about love and healing. And Kathy being an advocate and being a person who is open and passing the love and light in her community and to anyone who comes within her path. And so we were talking about community and I asked Kathy to pick out, pick out something from one of her many writings. Please go to her website and check out the writings of Kathy Wright Lewis and about community and her work is about community and about how we are led to spiritual healing in our communities. Okay, I'm gonna read a little from Mariah C page 42, um, then we're about to the, the school to the rally for um, busing. 10 yellow buses anxiously stood outside of the Browns Village First Believers Baptist Church and Reverend Mitchell, bullhorn in hand, stood on the top step proudly, showing all of his teeth. He was almost breathless at the newsworthy sight of over 300 people gathered before him. He and the Parents for Equal Education Committee had only expected 100 with luck and prayer. But just last night, ministers from all over Brooklyn began calling. They had heard the call and they were coming. It was well known that the popular civil rights leader, Mega Evers, had just been killed and brothers and sisters were tired of feeling powerless. We're going to turn this thing around, each one had stated, in one way or another before hanging up. Amen, amen, brother or sister, the Reverend had replied each time. By the end of the last call, Reverend Mitchell felt almost delirious, a feeling of euphoria welled up inside of him. God's going to give us this school, sister. We're going to make history tomorrow, he had told Passion, 11 o'clock the night before. She couldn't help but be excited as well. Maybe this is what my life has been leading up to, she thought to herself, hanging up the phone. Maybe this is my purpose. Watching from her fourth floor window, Mama Letty was overwhelmed by it all herself. Imagine so many colored people gathered together in one place. And that young Reverend Mitchell, he reminded her so much of Reverend Franklin, the reminiscing of 26 years before continued un uncontrollably. Her senses were tingling still, and it wasn't just from the nightmares. Death was lingering in the air. 
she felt its grip coming and she knew it was close. I'm gonna stop there. All right. This, uh, this, this, uh, um, thank you. Talking about community and talking about whatever our community is and how we are in it and how we um, may suffer. And our world is suffering right now. Many different people don't know where to turn or what to do. So this, I love this, this conversation about community and how spirit could lead you to healing and how spirit is always leading you to healing. Always. I love what you said um, on the break that you said that I was, I mean, I, I'm paraphrasing, but if, can you repeat, like you talked about how the, um, how spirit led you in the community and how the community is the, the spirit is the answer to the healing. To the healing. Yes. Yeah. Well, this, when you are thinking that nothing is, nothing can help you, you know, this, this time, especially because people do feel so hopeless and they're losing people. And it's easy to think all oh, my people are dying, you know, and it's hopeless. Um, and you have nowhere else to turn but to spirit. Now you have no choice but to go within. It's almost like slavery. You know, uh, we had no choice but to be spiritual people because that's all we had. <laughs> you know, that's all we had. So it was easy for us to hold on to what we've always known, you know, what was what's inside. And it was easier to hear because all of the negativity that was outside of us, you know, we could we couldn't buy into completely. Otherwise, you self-destruct, you know. So so yeah, the community is here, and that's where our community started. You know, we didn't get out of slavery not helping each other. We got out of slavery helping each other. We got a, out of slavery like Harriet Tubman here in spirit and telling us which way to go to get to, to break free. You know, so that is that same spirit. It's, there's nothing different. OK, it's just it looks different. It's a different year, but it's the same situation. It's the same situation. And we need it today. We can turn away from all the negativity, all the crazy news, all the happenings, all the judgment, we can turn away. We can choose right. to live in love and light. We can choose. Right. And Kathy has given so many examples and even has given a roadmap, some breadcrumbs on how to get there have been <laughs> explicitly said here today. You can stop, ask, listen, stop, ask, listen, and be led. Mm -hmm. Kathy, you have done so much amazing work that I know like you'll have to come back so that we could talk about more of your work. But I know that you have the community and uh, power in the pen. Um, and this, um, I think this is your latest book, Power in the Pen. Um, fascinating, where can people find this book? Oh, you can find that, that's on our website. Um, uh, power in the pen ww.org. You could also buy it on Amazon. All of the books are available there as well. And if you just if you just put my name in uh, um, on Amazon, all of the books will appear, you know, or go on my website. But yeah, that's our uh, our third anthology. Uh, one of the uh, uh, members, illustrator John Lanton, that's one of that's one of his pieces. Uh, he's an amazing artist. Um, the pictures that were that are on the book is uh, are the pictures photographs made by one of our uh, members. Her two sons took the pictures, and they're just little guys. AJ and, um, and Aaron, they they did a great job. So everybody, every, it's all about um, supporting artists, and every artist, absolutely, they're all amazing authors. Everybody in there. So to me, this represents community at its core. Mm -hmm. How it started, how you did your own work how you brought people together to write, how they how they come together to on Zoom today, how there's, I've been to a couple of the readings of Power in the Pen, and uh, they're, they're so powerful, so powerful, and such an amazing example of community. We have to forge forward to have that community. And there's something so very special that you could feel the love between all of you uh, on Zoom. Um, people coming forth and sharing their work i just like i highly recommend if you do not understand community watch and go to power in the pen and observe the love between 
each person love is where it's at and there's something you have here and that but before um our time is up i have to hear uh heal america from power in the pen written by you kathy okay all right <laughs> absolutely well we had done the book everyone uh submitted um their their um work excerpts and, and we decided on uh you know, we talked a lot about what is it that we want to have as a theme? What do we want people to to hear this year? And last year, of course, 2020, we, you know, it was all about COVID and um, George Floyd and, you know, tributes to those we had lost. But this year, uh, all we could hear was um, from everybody after they had finished, I heard Heal America. And uh, I, I have to first give uh, credit to um, Mokichi Okada, um, um, the, man, the man God gave Joe Ray to, which is a healing, uh, spiritual healing um, out of Japan. And he wrote, after the bombs were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, he, he in, living in Japan, his family was spared. He, he wrote a book called Heal America because he said that if, we, if America be, can be healed, um, then everybody else will have a chance. Anybody who would do something like that really truly needs healing. And, and I agree. Um, so uh, here's Heal America. Thank you. We are not begging. Heal America is not a plea. Heal America is our decree. With righteous intention, it's our declaration. As we utilize the power we possess, we evoke our ancestors, spirit guides, archangels to impress the insistence of healing our nation from this relentless, hateful devastation. 500 years of wickedness, we rebuke you from our existence and proclaim the era of love and unity, taking back our community. With fear, we fear no impunity because we have learned his I am presence we have earned. All power is in our hands. It's our time, so we will take a stand. All power is in our hearts. His rod removed all fragmented parts. Healed through the valley of the shadow of death, we've sprung. All power is released from our tongues. We now, we now know, we know the way now. We've just begun. Taking back our children, our homes, our land, taking back our minds. You can no longer enslave us with your kind. Smiling face while plunging knives in our backs. You've been revealed. We see you now. In fact, we're covered from head to toe. Shielded auras protect us. See how we glow? Your trickery is done. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No, not one. No, not one of his anointed ones shall perish. As long as one another we cherish. Our spirits are one. Yes, brothers and sisters, we have won. Now that we realize for far too long, our hearts, our eyes were covered with lies. Today, we remove the enemy's disguise. Now we can recognize one another and rise. Amen. Kathy Wright Lewis, we are out of time, but thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh my goodness, that was a <laughs> mic drop. Please join me every second and fourth Wednesday. Uh, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Love and light with Dr. Lisa. Next time we're gonna have Reverend Dr. A uh, Reverend Dr. Adara L. Walton. So you gotta come back for some more fire. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Love Thank and light. Love Be and well. Light. Thanks for listening to Love and Light with me, Dr. Lisa. Everyday living in peace. You spent the last hour engaging in challenging and transformational conversations all for the purpose of living a peaceful, joy-filled existence. Join me next time to continue growing in love and light through healing practices and acts of love. To learn more or work with me, Dr. Lisa, visit educationthroughengagement.com. That's educationthroughengagement.com. Remember, the world changes when we change by coming home to love. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com.